How can you build this part with mirroring, saving some work, saving some time with all the tricky sketches and slots coming up? Hey, this is Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Today's tutorial, we're talking about this standoff bracket. So if it's helpful, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. And in the comments below, let me know what kind of tutorial would be helpful for you. Would it be a 3D print setup or would it be more sketching? Love to hear from you. So here's an example of the drawing we're gonna be going through. Check out that link if you wanna download the drawing or feel free just to follow along. I'm now gonna do a quick run through of the interface. Feel free to skip ahead if you've already seen this. Let's do a very quick run through of the interface of Fusion 360. First, you've got your main data panel, and this is where you can see files that have been shared with you as well as all the files that you're creating. You can start a new project, and within a project, this is where we can upload or import files or start a new folder and further manage our designs. On the left, you have a browser. You can see the file name. You can see what's active when it comes to multiple components where you can select each one and make it active. You can expand and look at bodies as well as select this visibility control. This main command bar up here is where you can change between the different workspaces. You can do a lot in the design workspace where you're creating solid geometry as well as doing assemblies. But this is where you can access the cam space, generative design, simulation, and the rest. The timeline down below allows you to track your order of operations as well as go back and edit and reorder features as needed. Clicking a new tab allows a new design or new file notifications, the extensions, as well as job status will let you know if you're working online or offline. The help menu can be found here where you can search through existing tutorials and helpful topics. The preferences menu, of course, lets you control your entire experience with Fusion. It's worth noting down below these display settings can adjust your visual style, whether it's shaded with edges or wireframe if needed as well as controlling the different camera views and visibility, the ability to zoom and fit everything to the screen or zoom in on a specific window or to turn on the grid when sketching, as well as the ability to control multiple views or a single view. The first thing is strategy. How do we attack this? The profile is critical. So this profile in the front view is exactly what I would want to sketch in our first sketch. One thing we, I noticed it is symmetrical, so we could mirror. So we're going to practice that. There's, there's an argument for both sides, but if you know it's always going to be symmetrical, meaning these cuts on one side will always match the, the other side, then mirror can be a great strategy. Let's do that today. We're going to start a new part or new design. Start a sketch, go to the front plane. Now, if it's okay, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you guys something that w is a hang up for a few new users. And it's trying to do this almost in pieces where maybe they kind of like extrude. So they'll extrude the like leg, leg of it, extrude. Hopefully you're already seeing like this is a lot of work to do that same design. So this is why giving the profile or that some, you know, your first sketch, some thought. So looking at this drawing, this is the profile I want to do. And I'm going to do half of it because we plan on mirroring. Okay. Starting a new file again, new sketch front plane. Okay. I'm going to keep the origin in the center. And we could do an offset, but I'm going to just sketch this rough shape just for the practice with the constraints. Okay. Okay. So what did I mess up? I'm going to select this line and make that vertical. And I'm going to line up the point to the point. And I'm also going to line up this point to this point and say that they're horizontal. Now a good rule of thumb, in any CAD design is use the constraints as much as you can before you put in your dimensions that you care about. 
how would you describe it to someone? Well, I'd say, well, it needs to line up with the origin. That's a vertical line. But also that this edge and this edge, it's the same thickness. So they should be the same. So I'll come up and say those are equal. Great. All right. Is there any other constraints that I know? Not at the moment. So let's start adding some dimensions. Okay, before I drop in my dimensions, I'm going to make sure my units are what I want. And I'm going to do inch. And let's do a dimension from the height, the top to the bottom here. I know that that is 1 and 15 sixteenths. So I can actually type it in that way. And it's going to convert it. We could show it in fractions as well. But I'm going to leave them as they are. Okay, so I know a bunch of dimensions doubled. And since we're doing half, I'm going to draw or sketch a line going up and down and I make that a construction line. And this is going to be very helpful going forward. Okay, so I know the overall distance is 10 and a quarter. So we'll dimension from the outer. Sorry, the order does matter here. I'm going to do, wish it didn't, dimension the construction line to the outer edge. And before I place it, I'm going to right click and choose diameter. I know diameter is a little weird and you move it over, it doubles it. But you can think of if this was a revolve or a round part, it's a diameter. Or if it's an extrude like we're doing, the diameter is the way of doubling a dimension. And this can be very helpful so that you don't have to do everything in half, right? So double click on my mouse and the wheel and it zooms in. All right, so next, how can we get the rest of the dimensions? Let's do the top. We already know the top. What about the thickness? Let's do the thickness here. So I pick these two edges. There we go. And the thickness is 1 8. Now, one of my things that I'm always looking for is what's blue and what's black. The blue means that it's been, it's not fully defined. We haven't really locked in where it, how it's supposed to behave or where it sits. Okay, so what are we missing with our dimensions? Well, I do know the thickness is going to be 1 8th, and I could do an equation, but we'll just leave it in. Don't have to think about the equations just yet. Now, one tricky dimension that we have on the sketch is this, this center to center. And that's 9 and 1 16th. So how can we do that? Well, I love construction lines. I'll come in and snap to the midpoint of this edge, sketch the line, make it construction. I'm going to dimension from here to here. Diameter. Double it again. And this time it's 9 1 16th. And there we go. Okay, so it looks like it's fully defined. Okay, next thing, let's extrude this. I'll hit E on the keyboard or find my extrude. And we're going to extrude it a depth of a depth of 1 and 3 sixteenths. So we're extruding this profile. We want to preview it. It's 1 3 sixteenths. Great. Okay, so now that we have this shape. Let's go ahead and cut out those two slots and then we'll mirror everything. Great. So coming up to the top, I'm going to start a sketch on this face. I'm going to type in S for search slot. I'll do an overall slot. And I'm just going to drag it in rough. Okay. I don't know. I could start locating it, but let's go ahead, drop it in, right? Okay. So we know immediately this distance from center to center, 2.75 or two and three quarter. We know the thickness or the, you know, the radius. Whoops, I messed up. Let's instead do the radius of that arc is one eighth. Okay, so now how do we get it placed? It, we just need to figure out where it sits side to side and up and down. Well, I know that it should be centered. So I can sketch a line from middle to middle. It'll snap into place, select it, make it construction. And we can drag this on 
and then it's locked in. I try to drag it off, it's stuck. Okay, great, so what's next? Well, I know the center slot, the total distance. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch this line going up, and I'll do a construction line, and we're gonna dimension to another construction line. This way we can double it. Because it's a fraction and I don't wanna deal with doing the math, which I could with fusion, but fractions can be tricky. So I'm gonna double this and make my life a little easier, and I can just type it in that way. Three, 15, sixteenths. There we go. Let's extrude cut all the way through so we don't have to think about it. All done. Let's do this one. Start sketching. I do a search for slot. Same program. Now we could have done both of those sketches since they both could extrude down. We could have done them together, but um, one advantage to not is sometimes heavy sketches or lots of entities can bog down your computer and it can feel slow with Fusion. So that's that's totally a preference thing up to you. It is totally doable for this one, I think. But, but I decided to split them apart and now I have two different features that I can edit as well. There's the radius and center to center, I believe is one and a quarter. What else are we missing, right? So we wanna line up with the center or we wanna use that dimension that's provided in the drawing at nine and one sixteenth. So we can do it either way. So we'll try that. Let's um, sketch a line going up and down. This is a construction line. And let's do a construction line going up and down here. And we can dimension from this to that construction line, right click, diameter. So you can see there's definitely a pattern with this part. Wanted to show you guys this method for dimensioning. Space 116, there we go, hit okay. And now we'll extrude this out. Which direction, down and all the way through. Great, okay, so we're pretty much done, right? This is great. Now, how do we finish it? I'm gonna type in S for search and do mirror. And one trick here for you new, new users of Fusion is you wanna select not the faces, features, none of that. You wanna do the whole body so it grabs the whole shape. Select the body and then where do you mirror across? What plane would you wanna double it across? Over here. So I'll go to mirror plane, select this face and it doubles. Preview is can be misleading. This one looks good. And there it is, looks great. All right, so let's now finish it off. There's a seam. And if you go to your bodies folder, two bodies. How do we finish this off? Some other CAD packages, you don't have to do this, but with Fusion for now you do, I guess. So search, sorry about that, moving too fast. Search, combine, select both bodies, join, hit OK, and it solves it as one body. And there we go, we've got this model. So in review, um, I sketched just one half of it, but I was careful to do this profile, right? This made my life so much easier as we saw before. And then I extruded, and then I did these slot cuts and then mirrored the whole thing. Now, could we have sketched this as one shape and then sketch both sides and both? That'd give us more control and make more to edit down the road, which could be to our advantage. But if it's always symmetrical, then mirroring is a great strategy. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.